Son, bless his name. Lift your hands to Jesus. Bless the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. Bless him from the depth of your heart. The one who does great wonders in the midst of his people. Let him hear your voice in gratitude. Father, we bless you. We honor you, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the miracle walker, the one who changes, who lifts, who transforms destinies. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we declare that your name alone be exalted in the land of the living. Forever and ever, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. We worship you. Father, the Bible declares that he that cometh unto God must come believing that he exists and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words in part. I have come. With open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart. Forever true, change in me and change in you. We have come with open hearts. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Speak to us tonight. For this is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you. And I am your house, Lord, I welcome you, Lord, I welcome you, I am your house, your home, I welcome you today. Yes, Lord, we thank you. Indeed, you are welcome. Take your place. Glorify Jesus tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you. Give Jesus a mighty hand clap. Good evening, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Many things happen in the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is a place he has chosen to reveal his presence. The house of God is a place of wisdom and grace and power. And we thank God for granting us this grace. Let me encourage you to open up your heart. One word from the Lord received with a heart of faith can make the whole difference as far as your life and destiny is concerned. So let your heart be opened. Every time the word of God comes, with it comes breakthrough, liftings, impartations, transformations of all kinds. 
make sure that you are intentional about receiving the word let there be no distraction let your eyes be fixed on jesus the bible says the lord appeared again to samuel at shiloh by his word god appears to men by his word may he appear unto you tonight in jesus name hallelujah the days of his power i'd like you to pay attention please write it and pay attention i believe that god will move very mightily in this place tonight this teaching will hand you certain keys tonight that will grant you access to superior spiritual power and i'm praying that your eyes will be open to see and your ears be open in the name of jesus christ the days of his power one of the greatest blessings that can be given to the believer aside from the holy spirit is the gift of a teaching priest second only to the ministry of the holy spirit and even the word of god one of the greatest blessings that a believer can have is access to the gift and the ministry of a teaching priest a teaching priest is not one who can teach a teaching priest is not one who is a preacher a teaching priest is one who is determined by covenant to leave no stone unturned until God's people rise to a position of stature and knowledge and wisdom through the sound exegesis, the sound communication of doctrine. That is a teaching priest. A preacher is not necessarily a teaching priest. In fact, a teacher of the word may not necessarily be a teaching priest. It is the heart condition, the determination to see God's people rise, to ascend superior levels in the spirit by granting an accurate understanding of the word of God. Jeremiah 3.15, a popular scripture here, it says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. They shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. That is the assignment of a true shepherd who is according to God's heart to feed you with knowledge and understanding. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3, very popular scripture, the Bible says, now for a long time or a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. I have observed time and again that any group of people that goes through this kind of negative a condition are a people who are about to die and fade out of relevance without the knowledge of the true God the presence of a teaching priest and no laws to govern their lives when Satan wants to destroy a people the battle that he fights over their life is around these three areas he fights their knowledge of the true God he fights the presence or the efficiency of a teaching priest and then he 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 takes away the appetite for decorum and order in their lives so that they become a lawless people. The Bible records that Jesus wept two times according to scripture. Number one was in John chapter 11 verse 35 says Jesus wept and the reason why he wept was because his beloved Lazarus had died three days now and he was so driven and taken over by that emotion that sense of love and they saw him and say oh how he loved him they testified that jesus loved lazarus and then what will happen afterwards was a miracle of resurrection the second time that jesus would cry was in luke chapter 19 41 and 42 he wept over Jerusalem and the Bible says verse 42 this was his reason for weeping saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which pertaineth or belongeth unto your peace he says but now they are hid from your eyes they are hid from your eyes 
because you do not know in fact if you add one more verse let's try 43 it says for the days shall come upon thee that thy enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee and keep you on every side 44 he says they shall lay thee on the ground and thy children within thee they shall not leave thee in one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation so jesus wept over a people who were sincere zealous but very ignorant every time god demonstrates compassion over people he does not just move to heal he does not just move to deliver a man can be healed can be delivered and yet not be free genuine freedom comes through the sound communication of the word of god hallelujah you can be healed and then return back everybody who was healed the bible does not necessarily tell us that they retain their healing and we know even in modern history that people can be healed and return back again if they do not understand the principles that make for their health their wholeness knowledge is what preserves any miracle you receive are we together so this is very very important when God wants to bless you he grants you access to the Spirit of God the Spirit of truth when God wants to bless you he grants you access to the Word of God then in addition to these two he grants you access to a teaching priest one who is able to bless you but you have a role to play the presence of God the presence of the Holy Spirit the presence of the Word the presence of a teaching priest although all of these are very necessary for your growth and transformation it does not automatically mean that just because the Holy Spirit is there just because the Word of God is there and just because a teaching priest is there that you will be transformed there are people who have had access to all this and yet they were not changed you always have a role to play and very quickly let me just show you as I lay the foundation for a discussion tonight wherever we stop we'll stop and pray second Peter chapter 1 please the full text is from verse 2 down to 10 but let's just go to verse 8 for the sake of time second Peter chapter 1 from verse 8 he said for if these things be in you before then he kept telling them add to your faith patience to fa patience virtue he says if these things be in you and abound they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ reading to 10 verse 9 it says but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged of his old sins i love verse 10 wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure for if ye do these things ye shall never fall it is your responsibility to take advantage of all these spiritual resources the holy spirit the word of god the presence of a teaching priest to receive with meekness like colossians 3 and verse 16 would encourage us and then when you receive with meekness or oh, please find that scripture for me it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly and then it says to receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your soul so when you receive with meekness now you engage it through faith are we together now colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 colossians 2 and verse 6 the bible says as ye have therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk ye in him it's one thing to receive Christ even as the word but it's another thing to walk ye in the reality of what you have received are we together this is very very important most believers do not know that they have roles to play 
so we submit ourselves to a very strong atmosphere of his word a very strong atmosphere of his presence and yet people are not changed because they do not know that they have a role to play your role is to receive through meekness through discernment through humility of heart and then to obtain grace from god to walk in keeping with the truths that you have learned now that you know these things the bible says happy are you if you do them if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. it takes power to produce results in this kingdom results in this kingdom are manifested through power without the power of god it is impossible to see the glory of god revealed the Bible is full of scriptures that attest to the fact that possibilities in this realm are at the instance of the power of God that is at work in a life and at work through a life. Exodus chapter 14, please. Let's run through a few scriptures very quickly from verse 30 and 31. Exodus 14, 30, 31. Victory over Pharaoh and his cohorts the contest at the Red Sea, the Bible says, Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. 31. Here's what the Bible says. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. It says, And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. The fear of the Lord and their capacity to believe God was at the instance of the display of power. That the God who can cause Pharaoh, the horses, even and their rider to be thrown into the sea, to make the Red Sea part and then to cover it again, he must be God. And the Bible says they feared him and they also feared Moses. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus, verse 20 and 21. And here's what he had to say. He says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He says, according to the power. Someone say, according to the power. One more time, please. According to the power that worketh in us not according to the power that is available in God, according to the power that works in us. All power belongs to the Lord, he says. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that all power belongs to God, but it is the measure of that power that works in you that will command the possibilities that you see in your life, according to the power that works in us. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, According as his divine power hath given us all things, that means as far as the matters of life and godliness is concerned, you cannot do away with the power of God and expect a manifestation nor a performance in your life. Please pay attention. Many people ignore the power of God and they expect spiritual realities to find expression. Mm -mm. It takes power to build a great ministry. It takes a power to build a great destiny. It takes power to be able to raise ordinary children to become giants. It takes power to remain. It takes power to not die. It takes power to be strengthened. It takes power to be wealthy. It takes power to be wise. It takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness. A generation that ignores the power of God is a generation that will never represent the purposes of God. The issue of power has nothing to do with Pentecostalism or charismatism. It is the modus operandi of the kingdom that as far as manifesting spiritual realities is concerned, it will take more than desire. Someone shout power. power. Let the devil hear it. Power. power. Luke chapter 1, please, from verse 26. 
Follow this story closely. Luke 1 26. The Bible says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. All right? To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Next verse, please. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Next verse. The Bible says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Verse 30 now. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. So he was bringing glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Why? 32. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Reading to 35. It says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now. Mary said, I have heard of the mighty things you have said would happen through me, but how shall this be, seeing that I know not a man? In other words, the process of marriage has started, but it's not been culminated with Joseph. So it can be consummated. So how am I going to get pregnant? If you had been patient for me to get married, and now you say you will have a child, it will make sense. Because now I will subscribe to things that happen naturally, the law of reproduction. But now you are meeting me, a virgin who is a spouse, and you are telling me this mighty thing will happen through me. And in your discussion, you did not even mention Joseph in the story. So how shall these things be? Seeing I know not a man. 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, but it will not stop there. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. It says, Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee as a result of power shall be called the Son of God. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. Jesus was born through the ministry of power. It took more than the speakings of God for him to arrive. He said the power of the highest shall overshadow you. In fact, Jesus himself was not only born of the power of God. The Bible tells us Paul was mentoring the church in Rome. That should be... Um, Romans chapter 1, I believe, from verse 3 and 4. He began to teach them and he said, The Son of God, he said, Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Remember where we just read? And said, he, the Bible says, He was declared to be the Son of God. Help me please. With power. It took power for Jesus to stop the suspicion whether or not he was the Son of God. He was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. That means without power, we would have been doubting till today if he was truly the son of God. It took power to clear the argument that he truly was the son of God. Ephesians chapter 1. I love this one from verse 15 listen closely Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 15 wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints uh-huh he says I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Pay attention now. It says, verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling 
and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints read verse 19 with me please ready one to read and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe just stop there what is the exceeding greatness of his power to we who believe not just to everybody Paul is saying I pray that God will open your eyes to understand certain things to grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him among the many things I want you to know the hope of your calling but then to also know the exceeding greatness of the power of God that is at work in us who believe the same power verse 20 that was exalted when he rose up from the dead that means the power that is at work in you is the same power that took Jesus from Hades and literally brought him out. Ah. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Lives in me. Listen, believe me, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a song. If this enters you as a revelation, something will happen to your life. You know, I was watching a video some days ago and I was watching A.A. A. Allen. It's a, it was a very old video. And I watched this man. They brought a man on a wheelchair. Deaf. No, no, he was not deaf, but he was dumb. He could not speak. And he was grounded on the wheelchair. And A.A. A. Allen was just preaching and was sharing the secrets to the power of God in his own life. And all the things that God gave him and when he was done talking the people were watching I don't know why those days they didn't clap and cheer up like we are now I wonder how those guys preach you would say something powerful and yet everybody will be looking like you are lying and he turned right to that gentleman and the wife was standing there and he said how long has he been in this situation could not talk could not walk and he held him casually ah! your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me he laid his hands and in an instant not gradually in an instant that man's tongue was unloosed or unlocked and he he lifted him and began to ask him questions and he told him to stand up someone sat on the wheelchair and the man started pushing the wheelchair I said oh God help us help us what did we lose what did we miss in this generation same power that conquered the grave lives in you lives in you same power that conquered the grave lives in me Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. Our generation is at the mercy of the manifestation of the power of God from the saints to redeem this evil and depraved generation. This is not a generation of blind loyalty again. The generation of, of our parents would believe even if they don't understand. But this generation is a generation of questions. If you say he lifts, prove it. If you say he changes lives, prove it. We are not going to just believe and say yes, sir, for nothing. Ministry without the power of God is only an invitation into a life of frustration. Believe me when I tell you. Business without the power of God. Parenting without the power of God. We live in a time where you will see a child five years old. And then he begins to confess, I killed my father, I killed my uncle, I killed my mother, 
and you are wondering five years power the darkness that is upon the earth today will require more than good speaking good discussion it will take a display of power genuine power as of old and it has nothing to do with being in ministry as you know power please hear me I wrote here the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness is power dependent write it down please the believer's efficiency as a child of God and as a witness is power dependent. No matter how prepared you are to be a witness, you can learn doctrine, wonderful. You can learn character, wonderful. But if the power component is not captured in your preparation, believe me, it will look like God did not send you. I hope you know that Moses already began to learn the wisdom of Egypt according to Paul's teaching before he left to encounter the God of the Bible. Yet when he was returning, God said, no, no, I will not send you just like that. Take this rod. It's a rod wherewith you will wrought signs and wonders. Let me submit to you sincerely. Our generation needs a revival of genuine power. Our understanding of power for the average believer in this generation is falling down and standing up. And while we do not downplay anything that is sponsored by the Spirit, there is a level of power. We need to go back to study history. How far did God use these men? How far did God anoint them? Men who shook cities by such a display of power. You know, let me tell you the truth. Today we pride in having revelation. You listen to those people, sometimes they had a simple childlike message. Repent, Jesus is Lord. Then they say, now sit down and watch. I'm done talking. I have told you to repent. You are justified to not understand it. But let me show you what he can do. When the blind see, when the deaf hear, when the dead are raised back to life, when lives change, that one is a manifestation of the power of God and this is one of the things that we are missing you would go to a crusade that is full of tens of thousands of people and preach and preach and make an altar call and only five people will come out is that a crusade you sang you acted drama there were all kinds of motivations you even shared water and shared all kinds of drinks to motivate the people and then you preach and out of tens of thousands of people go and read Acts chapter 2 the Bible says when the Holy Ghost fell 3,000 people in a moment 3,000 people one moment no clashing of cymbal no bass guitar no keyboard programming any atmosphere but when power came and power fell Peter said this is that this is that which was spoken by prophet Joel. There's frustration in ministry today because the power component has not been incorporated. There is frustration today in the presence of darkness because genuine power, we have not paid the price. And for those who have tasted a bit of it, we have come around that peripheral level, whereas there are deeper levels of power. Yes, sir. The days of his power. If Jesus himself had to be declared as the Son of God with power, it means every believer in Christ, listen very carefully, every believer in Christ, it is your responsibility to walk in partnership with the keys I'll be sharing with you to make your calling and your election sure. Please let me speak to you respectfully if you're a man or a woman of God here. People have a right to suspect you and think you are a burden to God's program until you validate your call 
among the many evidences by the display of the power of God to change, to heal, to deliver, to set free. By the time you come into a family, ladies and gentlemen, and within three days, their lives change, doors open, the yokes of witchcraft broken because you came. Elisha said, oh king, don't be afraid. Let no man come and let him know that there is a prophet in Israel. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. I remember many years ago just when we were at the infancy just even preparing to start this work I remember one of the spectacular miracles that God did I had seen bits and pieces of the grace of God but that would be an event where God healed someone he was on phone I prayed for that gentleman I don't know where he's probably he's somewhere around the world even listening today he had a, a medical condition where his spine the spine was broken they listed you know how they, they name all those things and it was broken and they were waiting for some people from india at the teaching hospital in zaria and i prayed for this gentleman i remember he was even wearing a neck um what do you call it a collar and i prayed honestly looking from this standpoint i don't know if i believed a miracle will happen or not but I remember praying and that gentleman removed everything and ran to his mother's room. It was when night call just started. And the only thing I know is that the mother shouted, Jesus, and that was it. Let me tell you, the next day in that family, you know how people come for burial. People came to verify, is this thing true? I myself, it was when I saw the gentleman who came with the x-ray. I remember when that thing happened let me tell you over the next maybe one month I got calls from medical personnel I got calls from several people I have this disease that means people have been hurting but until they find where genuine power can work they would rather just keep quiet with their pain Oh, restore power, restore power, restore power to the body, restore power more than the speakings of men, more than the philosophies of men, more than falling down and standing up, more than just speaking philosophies, restore authentic apostolic power to your body. Let me tell you the truth. It is not difficult to take a nation. Believe me when I tell you, it is not difficult to take a territory. Territories were supposed to be taken to the degree to which they see the excellency of God's power. We have replaced power with good speaking and there is a place for it. But let me tell you, if we believe we are going to save this generation just by the gist we are saying, we will be disappointed. I can tell you. Why will I not go to a harbor list when I try every option and every pastor prays for me and nothing happens and yet I am dying? Don't tell people don't go to a harbor list, don't go back to the village, don't go to, you don't know the desperation of people's pain. When you understand what people can do in the presence of pain, you will cry for power rather than condemn people until you give an alternative that is superior, an alternative that is provable. Forget about this cheese that you say, don't go to the devil. Hallelujah. That little incident would be the beginning of mighty things that God would do through my life, but it was a lesson. 
I remember the frustration that I felt as a young man of God just starting out that I would I remember one time I went to pray for someone and I spoke to that man I laid my hands upon him he was on a wheelchair the wife absolutely believed in me she beat you you, you couldn't have said that they, it was unbelief the woman believed in me with all her heart that if I stepped into their house that man would stand up from the wheelchair but I prayed for him sincerely let me tell you the truth by the privilege of God's grace I don't claim to know so much but I've read this Bible a bit believe me when I tell you I quoted scriptures I taught her doctrine then it was now time for performance and I stood right there and said in the name of Jesus I decree and declare Lord by your mercy this and that and that absolutely nothing happened you see, not many people will be honest to tell you this. Everybody would just talk all kinds of nonsense. I left that there and I said, God, this is not good. It's not good for me. It's not good for my mindset. It's not even good for my health. And it's not good for the people you are sending me to. Can I tell you, a time will come where people get used to you being powerless. It's a dangerous state as a man of God. When people conclude you, people have groups in their minds. They know those who are serious. They know those who are sincere but powerless. And they know those who are joking. When they really have problems, they know who to meet. In one day, nations can be saved if they can truly see the power of God, even by the Spirit of God. The Bible says Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. Please sit down. Thank God for the testimonies that we see and we celebrate. Thank God for the little that God does in and through our lives. But believers, let me submit to you. Look at me, please. How many of you will celebrate dew just falling during rainy season? As powerful as dew is, is it enough to cause your crops to grow? It takes, it takes rain. It says, as for rain in the time of the latter rain. We are celebrating trickles in the body of Christ. One headache here, one miracle happening there. That is the reason why they suspect all of us and think that we are all whatever it is. Because there is a level of consistency that mastery must bring. That people can come and know for a shorty that in addition to hearing the counsel of God, they are going to see God in their lives overnight. Let me tell you the truth. It is not difficult to win souls. I tell you this, except and unless they see the display of the power and the glory of God. Men are not that stubborn. They just have not been transported to a realm higher than science. The replacement for power is philosophy and the explanations of men. And the excuse that men don't have faith. someone learning the believers efficiency as a child of God and as a witness of his resurrection is power dependent John 1 12 let's look at a few scriptures my God I pray that someone as you are listening to me tonight you will truly have an encounter with the power of God John 1 12 but as many as received him the Bible says to them he gave what did he give them hmm. so they've already received him the Bible says in addition he gave them power power to become power to become the breadwinner power to become the, the lifter who lifts others Power to veto the yokes and the curses. Power to declare longevity over your family. Power to lift people out of shame. Power to answer the question, where is your God? 
it says to them gave he power to become sons of God even to them that believe on his name Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7 please he said where of Paul now I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power I was made a minister it took more than oil and earthly ordination to make me a minister it took more than the laying on of hands of the presbytery he says that grace was given to me and that came by the effectual working of his power in 2nd Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 2nd Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5 the Bible talks about the possibility of having a form of godliness. Is that in your Bible? But denying the power thereof. Please look up. You can have the form of godliness. Oh yes, he heals. Oh yes, he lifts. Amen. I know. Oh yes, I, I prophesy. And all these things we do. The Bible says, but denying the power. He said, turn away from such. Not just from such people. Turn away from such mindsets that makes you to embrace the form of godliness and then there is no power component to back it. So your being a witness in this kingdom is power dependent. Can I tell you sincerely, especially for those of us who are laborers in the vineyard, this work is going to become a burdensome, a, a, a pattern, a repetitive cycle of burdensome pain that will evolve to jealousy and anger without the genuine manifestation of the power of God. I submit to you without sounding proud. Members are not going to leave their house and come and sit down quietly just to hear stories. They can listen online. Whatever makes them to get up and come and sit down, you better be sure that they will come and receive what will change their lives. It is going to take more than just listening. Some of you, while you are seated right now, your loved ones are in the hospital. Some of you, while you are seated right now, you can't even wait for miracle service because the urgency that is there, it may not, if they, it is a matter of life and death. Unfortunately, respectfully but unfortunately, we have reduced the power of God to material prosperity in the body of Christ. So whether you have zero anointing or whatever, once you are rich, it is generally, it is safe to conclude that you have power. While it is true that there is a dimension of the power of God that brings kingdom wealth, can I tell you the truth? It will take more than money to move the purposes of God. You don't drop money on someone on a wheelchair and he stands up. No. If that were so, we'll stop preaching and all of us will go to look for money and just drop it on sick bodies. It takes more than a bottle of water. It takes more than a handkerchief, an apron, anointing oil. Power to change lives. That someone leaves his home, that mama can guarantee that as I'm bringing my son for koinonia, she doesn't need to tell him you will change. She can only pray that he will come with her. And the young man just sits down. And while praise and worship is happening, and the word is happening, the one stubborn child who vowed that he will not change, an altar call is made, and he's the first to run from outside. That is power. Power that translates a person from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. That is genuine power, ladies and gentlemen. 
Malisa Nikabaruziata Makusiata. Someone who is the only one who has risen among 11 people in the family and he comes just for one encounter and within one week doors open and all six get jobs first then the remaining are, they just rise into superior dimensions the bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection with great power not great speaking not great stories and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and he says and great grace was upon them all great power great power great power he gave witness of the resurrection with great power it takes great power some of us while we are seated here our loved ones have not been interested in the things of God for a long time because sincerely there is nothing about your faith experience that has become a sermon. They have looked at your life and there is no demonstration of the reality of the power of God. Tonight's meeting is to provoke you. The Bible says he gave us power. He gave us more than a message, ladies and gentlemen. There is a message to this thing, but there is the power of God. By the time someone comes with a genotype issue, blood condition, and you know, listen, I'm not talking about miracles that you are not sure, miracles that are doctored here and there, genuine miracles when the power of God touches a man, every scientific thing can confirm it, even if it cannot explain it. Hear me. It is not difficult for your father to be saved. The day the power of God is displayed in that family, go and read your Bible and see how people were converted in a moment. Did you not read about the jailer? The Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang. Is that true? And that everybody within the prison heard them. Suddenly there was a sound. It came and there was an earthquake and all doors opened. The jailer thinking they had gone. He took a knife and was about to kill himself. Say no, don't hurt yourself. We are all here. And that began the beginning of the salvation of his whole family. We lie today about testimonies because there is no genuine power to produce authentic miracles. We talk about people who are healed that we can never see. People who are doing all kinds of exaggerated miracles. Why can't it happen in the midst of God's people? Oh, my help has come. Oh. tell you the truth in my opinion there is nothing more demeaning to the message of the gospel and the power of God than telling people stories of what God did before and then there are people with that same situation right there and then at the end of it you share the grace and go what was the purpose of the story it's like I claim to be selling water and I tell you listen I gave people water by of water bottles of water and someone says I am thirsty even if it's half a bottle I will be grateful and we say don't worry it's all right I know that yesterday I am telling you go and ask them yesterday nobody is arguing but you claim to have an endless supply of that water why will you not quench the thirst today thank God for the one who lifted yesterday but we need to see the one who lives now. Thank God for the one who healed yesterday. But we need to see the one who heals now. Thank God for the one who saved yesterday. But for God's sake, we need to see the one who saves now. Someone shout now. now. 
one more time say now thank God for the one who can change lives before but we want to see the one who can change lives now he said how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land thank God for what he did but now I'm in a place where I need to see your power hallelujah without power a time will come when this generation will stand openly and reject Jesus generationally I'm not talking about individuals people will stand up you know the way there are movements movements a movement will stand up and say our goal is to officially announce that as a generation we have chosen to take Jesus out of our lives ah but not when we are alive and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as, as long as I am breathing. I will always worship you. Restore power. Restore healing power. Restore power that sets men free. Oh, before Jesus returns, there will be a restoration. I am telling you. The fathers prophesied it. Smith Wigglesworth said it. A. A. Allen said it. This great man said it. There has to be a restoration of authentic, genuine spiritual power at a level and a frequency of mastery that can be a backing to the gospel. Hallelujah. It was said that during the time of John G. Lake, Spokane was one of the cities with some of the healthiest people and manifestation of miracles because he had what we call healing rooms like dormitories and they would literally bring people there. He was accused of practicing medicine without license. Do you know the kind of audacity you would take to bring a sick body and keep that person there and you gave the person 30 days within 30 days regardless what was wrong we talk about the God that turned the son backwards for Hezekiah we talk about the one who kept the son still for Joshua you know we talk about that person as if he's a different God as if he went on a long vacation then they gave us another inferior one please hear me we want to see the nation saved in one day it would take more than good speaking some of them do not even understand English It will take more than that. Thank God for welfare. Thank God for charity. Pipe born water, rice, sewing machine. Thank God for it. But if somebody is sick, he does not need a sewing machine. If there are demons that sit upon people's lives, please don't get me wrong. I don't downplay those things. Those things only give added value. When Jesus showed up, he didn't give physical gifts. He announced the kingdom with such a demonstration of power he healed the sick they brought him people in the night when it was evening he healed them casted all the demons ask and now give the nations to you oh lord 
That's the cry of my heart Distant shores and the islands will see your light A demonstration of the power of God to a degree and a frequency that dumbfounds principalities and powers can I tell you the truth I know that many people downplay the place of the supernatural and the miraculous and then all these controversial miracles that are not spectacular enough Oh, headache was healed and someone is arguing with it and saying how are you sure it was a Panadol you took in the morning or the prayer of the man of God because there is a realm of the miraculous called notable miracles miracles that consultants will say listen I have practiced medicine for 35 years I have not seen it in this fashion that a woman with no tubes whatsoever carrying triplets where did the baby stay one there is a machine that can check it a man who comes to church on a wheelchair carries his wheelchair by himself back home remember that man has neighbors and they said I said this morning you were crippled and he said I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of God how many billboards can announce like that how many posters can announce like that that Jesus is alive. Please hear me. The darkness that is in this world today, I am saying it again. It will require more than just nice preaching more than having just a sincere heart i'm saying this because i believe there are many people here you are part of this mighty army my precious people hear me if god told the apostles to tarry you need to know why he gave them power he said you guys he spent three and a half years who teaches doctrine more than jesus who mentors a people more than the rabbi himself and he said i am confident of all i have given you but i submit to you is not enough tarry why will you still tarry? Every day was a lecture with Jesus. You know what it means to sit down in his presence, full of the Holy Ghost, receiving lectures for three and a half years. I thought that would be enough for ministry. He said, tarry until you'll be endued with power. We will keep giving flimsy explanations for the absence of power like it does not matter or it's not all about power of course it's not all about power but the role that power has to play nothing will replace it nothing will replace it do you know the confidence to do evangelism has died in many of you because there is no power to prove you don't know what you will go and tell the people that is the truth mama let's go to church and they'll say don't mind those those men of God who are fraudsters who will only come and collect money from you don't blame them until they see the display of God's power that someone walks in and while it is a I mean someone is coming on a crutch and the service has not even started and as soon as they come in look at the woman with the issue of blood the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment and said to herself if I may but touch if I may but touch the person talking to you has seen the grace of God to the glory of God but believe me it is it is child's play compared to where we are crying that God will help us get to because you see I don't know now I'm not saying you should I was I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across some kind of program or something like that that you know was on YouTube and it was a two-minute video and I decided to watch it it was magicians magicians were doing something you know they were doing all kinds of things I don't know what they were doing 
but I kept looking with anger in my spirit not anger towards them anger towards our condition I said what in the world is this these people through whether through divination or astral practices have been able to access routes in the spirit and I say here we are shouting God is almighty shouting God is all-powerful do you know how many people who are following koinonia right now from various hospitals imagine you are a sick patient and you are listening to a man of God right now talking maybe you are listening on air what else will you be looking for what better platform for evangelism where you have unbelievers surrounding you is that not the greatest if you were God would that not be the greatest opportunity to get that person healed this thing is not working in our lives let's just be honest and submit with humility and start searching for the pathway that leads to authentic power rather than standing in pride and talking about our falling here and there that is not producing any potent result when I speak I speak with love and honor to the body but I submit to you we are joking we need to obtain grace from God. It's an uncomfortable truth. If we call one person who is blind now to come and stand here, one person who is on a wheelchair now to come and stand here, one person whose life and family is under yokes and curses, come and stand here, one person who has gone through all kinds of bodily deformities, come and stand here, another person come and stand here and we give you a Bible as a man of God we say alright you claim that Jesus is Lord what else is a greater expression of darkness than this demonstrate the superiority of the life of God I like Elijah prophets of Baal let's meet at Camel this thing we have to settle once and for all all these debates about the sovereignty of God no let's go to Mount Camel if God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. In one day, a nation was brought to his knees by one man, not one church, not one nation. One day, one day, and he said, let's start with you. Call upon your God from morning till night. Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. And nothing happened. When it was the time of the evening sacrifice, he said, get out of the way now. Don't waste my time. That is mastery. That is not, you don't guess with that kind of risk. Listen, Elijah was teaching us, we all claim we're in the New Testament. And we say these guys are in the Old Testament. But see what they did in the Old Testament. We who are now fruits of the New Testament, let us demonstrate the superiority of what we stand on. The Bible says it was founded upon better promises. And please do not say the bodies of men do not matter. Because Jesus died in the flesh. The same grace that saves is the same grace that heals. The same grace that delivers. When he blesses, he blesses holistically. Spirit, soul and body. Tonight's teaching is a wake up call. It's a wake up call. And we called upon the God of heaven. The Bible says fire came and licked the entire thing, burnt everything and they killed the prophets of Baal. How about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego? How long did it take Babylon to submit to the Lordship of Jehovah? One day, one spectacular encounter. A day will come we'll step our feet across nations and they reject the gospel and we'll tell them you rejected light and darkness will suddenly appear physical darkness as proof that they have rejected the gospel that is a sermon greater than any oratory and people will run and say come show us the way of the Lord if it is true that Jesus is coming soon I submit to you the rate at which we are winning the world the November statistics of the world says we are 8 billion people and counting. 
Christianity practicing faith, including backsliders, including unserious people, all together professing Christians were about 2.6 billion out of how many? Over 2,000 years, this is what we have achieved. The Bible called a few people, these are they that turned the world upside down. There needs to be a spectacular manifestation of the hand of God. Go and read about the Azusa Street Revival. Go and read about the Wealth Revival. Go and read about men like John Knox. Go and read about men like E.M. Bounds, Charles G. Finney. Go and read about these great men. Believe me, it was when you see these things written in history, they are not empty talks. They were written for our learning. Man of God, something is wrong with your spiritual life if this message is not challenging you. A few of us that it looks like God has helped a bit. We are the ones that people have to make do it. Relative to what can be, what is there. There was a video I watched years ago. About a river somewhere, please sit down. A river somewhere in the east. That suddenly appeared also. I, I don't know if it's verified, but I mean it's, it's one time. And it was purported that it had some healing power. And it was recorded and people were jumping and diving into it. Even while they were recording them, they were not ashamed. Because it seemed to carry a semblance. There were thousands of people. It looked like a market square. A river that cannot speak. A river that cannot preach. A river that did not have a keyboardist. A river that does not give honorarium or take honorarium. It only, there was a, 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 a statement that it could heal. And people came from everywhere. Let me tell you the truth. Jesus would have been surprised if the only thing he brought is a sermon. Repent for the kingdom is at hand. Is that what your Bible says he did? No. He started, he announced himself with a spectacular demonstration of the miraculous. Then he now calmed the people down and said, come to the mountain. And then he now started teaching them. They didn't exactly believe, but could they argue? He said, even if you don't believe me, believe me for the work's sake. And then the ultimate of that power was when he died. Went to Hades, collected the keys, and on the third day he rose again. Nothing could bring him down. And he resurrected by the power of the Spirit and said all hail all authority in heaven and in earth has been given unto me he says go go have we truly been obedient let me tell you the truth evangelism is not something you just encourage people to do evangelism is a product of conviction when people see the authentic manifestation of power how many of you right now if we announce that in koinonia we are giving 50 50 000 tomorrow no announcement on social media that's the condition don't announce anything on social media but we're giving 50 50 000 for instance tomorrow you will see strategies of publicity you have never known the human brain can invent that is because they, there is an assurance that 50 000 is on ground a family of 10 can say let's quickly come because that's 500 naira that's rent people would travel by 2 a.m and come and wait patiently. Sun, too small a reason. Rain, too small a reason for 50,000. So when you tell people that Jesus is here, he saves, he heals, he delivers, they will first drag themselves and say, let's, let's watch and see what happens. At the end of it, you share the grace. They say, I knew it. I knew that is this nonsense that will waste my time again. The next time you invite them, they will say, pray for us. It's already a message. It's a, it's a, it's a shorthand form of a long writing that says you are wasting my time and I'm not prepared to go and waste my time in that place again. I pray that God will do something to me, to you, to Koinonia and to the body of Christ to restore genuine and authentic Power. the world is not prepared for our excuses the Bible says I reckon Romans chapter 8 I reckon that the sufferings of this time 
is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us it says for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of god creation was subject to the bondage of corruption not willingly but by reason of adam the one who subjected him that they are waiting to come into the glorious liberty of the sons This is the power of God. Let the blind see. Let the deaf hear. Let the crippled be healed. Let people with all kinds of demonic situations. Imagine a family comes and you tell them in the name of Jesus, the gates of this family is open. And right as you are prophesying, somebody calls at home and says, I don't know, but someone just came and gave us two million. He said, God sent him. Where are you right now? You say, I'm in church. What is the man of God saying? He's just declaring. He said, you better stay there. No amount of billboard, poster, internet advert will replace the demonstration of the authentic power of Jesus Christ. Authentic power of Jesus Christ. The prophet said, by this time tomorrow, tomorrow it happened. Little children, have you any catch? No. Cast your net to the right side. End of discussion. They caught so much fish. Do you know? I look at so many believers and I see the way I hate seeing people suffering. It is not just because it is my call. Every time I see this, I immediately take responsibility. Remember my vision that I shared with you? Of years ago no food no water who is the cause that was a whole generation speaking sometimes I'm not an emotional person ordinarily honestly I've seen all kinds of things and sometimes I even ask myself whether I'm all right is it that you don't cry can't you I'm, I'm it doesn't mean I'm not touched but I can just stand like a stone there but let me tell you sincerely you want to see tears from my eyes let me see oppression and God's people being reduced to become like Noah animals spiritually financially and, in, and otherwise that one has triggered compassion I can cry and weep like a baby do you know what it means to see a family of five people six people on their way to church no money no food but they love Jesus and you say they don't have faith what is your definition of faith I want to prophesy and they kneel down with their hands open expecting to receive and at the end of it we share the grace one year becomes two years becomes five years and absolutely nothing happened what of family members who say apostle I hear you know people send me text messages and sometimes they say apostle I've heard the mighty things that God is doing with you if you can only speak the word I know my mother or my brother and sometimes I, I take that burden and I say, Lord, these people believe in me and they believe in you. Help me to stop disappointing you. Let there be a higher level of power and a higher level of grace. The day you meet your father, they've been laughing at you and say, you are a, I hear that you are going to be a man of God. Say, my friend, go and look for a job. Wait, go and buy federal government form and look for a job ministry that is full of failures and you look at your father and say daddy you have been on this bed for five years I come in the name of the Lord I am your son but I come by the authority of the one who has sent me stand up and your father stands up and begins to walk around the compound what happened Jesus healed what happened Jesus delivered what happened Jesus saved It's a different thing to say, ah, God healed somebody somewhere and the person says, I am healed. People will easily be able to doubt. This is a generation that wants to see the power of God. Not just hear. You can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. Is God speaking to someone tonight? In one minute before I continue, I want you to lay your hands on your head. And say Lord I am available trust me with higher levels of your power trust me 
with higher levels of your grace someone is praying you are crying to the God of heaven higher levels of your power higher levels of your grace there needs to be results 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 in my life results in my Christian experience results demonstrations that Jesus is alive winning nations in a moment by the power of his word backed up by authentic genuine superior spiritual power in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I've read a few books about the saints past and mighty men and women of God and I have seen God moved through their lives in very mighty and spectacular ways. Not just in the area of healing, but bringing genuine breakthrough, genuine transformation. Whole families translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his son. Let me tell you the truth. I have seen whole families saved, non-Christian families, beginning from maybe someone in the family and then father, mother, sisters, brothers. We are not speaking from a standpoint of weakness. We are speaking from a standpoint of higher levels of hunger for more. That yesterday's anointing cannot suffice for today's challenges. There needs to be a higher level and a higher dimension of God's grace. There are nations today that were revival hubs but today they have become a historic monument sites where people go there to just feel bad and say God you once moved here there are nations and continents that if you wanted to see what God was doing you would have to travel to those regions today when you go there all you see are grave sites monuments that once upon a time God moved by this teaching the Spirit of God is hovering around the earth again one last time saying anyone who is available anyone doesn't matter what family you are coming from anyone who is available does not matter who knows you or who does not know you whether you are male or female anyone preacher I know you don't speak well but anyone anyone who thirsts he says in the third day that great day of the feast he said anyone who thirsts come let him come it's an invitation blessed be the man that God causes to approach him come for someone God is calling you you came to church tonight and God is saying I'm extending an invitation the dreams that you saw does not have to end as dreams Apostle I saw Smith Wigglesworth that's not enough telling the world you saw him is not what they want when Elijah carried the mantle of Elijah the sons of the prophet said the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah saving nations in one day bringing territories to the obedience of Christ in one day in one moment in one encounter we don't have the time to go city by city again the time is near we don't have the time to go conference by conference again taking regions and taking nations by the power and the fire of Jesus hallelujah
please write if you can let me share with you three platforms for accessing superior levels of the power of God and then we'll pray ah. someone God brought you to church to plant a fire that will not die soon hmm. this fire that is coming upon you is not planning to leave you soon it will burn everything until you become an inferno of fire there are men and women that will rise up in this end time from a standpoint of power you will not even know who is male and female again there will be people carrying authentic power authentic power authentic power authentic power we will fade away this this era of faking miracles this era of stage managing all kinds of things and introduce something authentic to the world again good speaking more than oratory more than intellectualism and philosophy oh let the power of God come again come upon this generation Maranatha let your power come come upon our homes come upon our families come upon our pulpits come upon our churches Maranatha, come, come, O oh God, come, O oh God, let your name not be to a reproach, come, O oh God, visit families again, come, O oh God, visit Africa again, come, O oh God. Visit Nigeria again. Come, oh God. Visit the West again. Visit the East again. Visit the South South again. Visit the North again. Pray one minute and say, Lord, visit again. Visit again. Visit again. Don't tell me Apostle Babalola's story. He has gone. Visit us again. Don't tell me about Archbishop Benson Itahosa. He has joined the cloud of witnesses. Visit again, oh God. Don't tell me about Catherine Kuhlman. Don't tell me about Emmy Temple McPherson. Visit again, oh God. Let history be rewritten. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Revive us again. Shabakata Katosketea. Visit again. Visit again. In your power. Visit again. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Three platforms. Please write. The nations will see again before he comes not everybody is playing games the nations will see again for the sake of one person a family will see Jesus again oh yes for the sake of someone who is in this crowd for the sake of someone in the overflows for the sake of someone watching by television for your sake he will come again Hallelujah. Two years ago, I was preparing for a meeting in Lagos and I had a vision. There was a denomination in this nation, I will not mention the name, that there was once a mighty and a great move of God 
across that denomination and for a while it looked like things faded away while I was praying and preparing for that meeting I saw light from heaven just returning back to that denomination and God told me that for the sake of the founding fathers that he is about to start raising genuine sons ordinary men trained by the spirit and he will empower them in such a way let me submit to you the people carrying authentic power are not yet in manifestation they are still in training believe me when i tell you thank god for what you are seeing but i'm telling you prophetically i have seen it there is going to be an emergence of power like you have not seen three platforms help us tonight oh god if this message does not touch you it's a sign that you are not serious with god and it's a sign that you are not interested in the program of god number one the first biblical platform that helps men access superior power to demonstrate and validate that Jesus is alive and to be able to be a revelation of his life and power to the nations the first platform is an encounter with the spirit of power please write it down encounter with the spirit of power please write it down Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again. I want to know you I want to hear your voice. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know. God is taking us to want to know hallelujah please hear me if you're a medical personnel here I want you to listen there is an outpouring that is coming on people who are medically related there is a reason why you see the study of medicine is not an academic issue at all please help our medical stand my God look what is happening there in the name of Jesus Christ doctor if the only thing you can give is injection and drugs you may not do much in this end time because there has to be power upon your hands more than the syringe there has to be strange manifestation in our hospitals resurrections from the dead healings miracles that you lay hands and dry away cancer lay hands dry away all kinds of demonic things hear me if you are called into the medical field i am telling you there is an anointing an end time anointing that is looking for you medical doctors lab attendants all kinds of people nurses midwives that a woman is about to lose her baby and you are on duty you will just stop that lab coat and carry your priestly regalia in the name of Jesus, I command supernatural delivery. A 
an encounter please sit down if you can with the spirit of power Micah chapter 3 and verse 8 but truly I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord it is the Holy Spirit that empowers men please look up respectfully speaking bottles don't anoint water does not anoint handkerchiefs and mantles don't anoint until an anointed person anoints them to be a point of contact so idolizing a bottle a handkerchief an apron a, a, you can have 30 bottles of oil in your house it will not produce anything until an anointed man anoints it as a medium if we, if it is done within the boundary of scripture we keep making a fool of ourselves placing our faith in mediums and look looking away from the spirit of god it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me if your anointing is without the presence of the spirit something is wrong with that impartation the holy spirit is the exclusive custodian of the power of god the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit. When there was creation to be done in Genesis 1, he was the first of the Godhead to be revealed. Is someone learning? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, an encounter with the spirit of power. There is a dimension of the revelation of the Holy Spirit called the spirit of power. It says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love. These are all dimensions of the same Holy Spirit. You can encounter the spirit of wisdom, but have you encountered the spirit of power? Halashali kaparosia. How shall these things be, Mary said, seeing that I know not a man. He said, the power of the highest shall overshadow you. How shall nations be saved? 2.6 billion compared to 8 billion people and growing. Let me tell you the truth. At the rate at which we are going, even if another thousand years is added, we will not be able to cover the globe. But when the power of the Holy Spirit comes into that equation, believe me when I tell you nations will be saved in one day because God will create spectacular events that will bring nations to their knees. One miracle in Gadara brought 10 cities to Jesus. 10. 10 cities. One woman at the well brought so many people to Jesus. An encounter with the spirit of power. The Holy Spirit can reveal himself as the spirit of power. But listen to me. There are two conditions to have an encounter with this dimension of the spirit's power. Listen carefully. Number one, I have taught you. You want encounters? Encounters are sponsored by the genuineness of your heart condition. Please write it. Under point one, forget about genuine spiritual encounters when your heart is not right with God. The heart condition. We are not talking of perfection. We are talking of sincerity and hunger. Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. A few scriptures very quickly. Jeremiah 17 and verse 10. 17, 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins to give every man according to his ways, not according to his desire. According to his ways. When you seek the Lord with your heart, then you will find him. Jeremiah 29, 13. 29, 13. Same Jeremiah. The heart condition. The first puzzle that must be solved if you desire an encounter with the spirit of God even the spirit of power you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart you can search for me with your mind you can search for me with your ego but it is when you search for me with all your heart 
Lord, it is either you or nothing. I love the song that the worship team sang. It is either you or nothing. Jeremiah 27 and verse 5. It says, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power and my outstretched arm. It says, and I have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me. The same power that I used to make the earth and heavens, I give it to whom it seemed good to me. That means I vet people. I can't trust someone with something so precious. There is something about your heart. Your heart for God. Lord, I am available. I am available. The heart condition is the first requirement. You want to encounter the spirit of power? You must trust God to check your heart and vet the sincerity of your motives. Listen carefully. The sincerity of your motive. I want power because I want a name. Forget it. Not this end time. God is too serious for that kind of joke. I want power because I want to also be a... Mm -mm. Whoever you want to heal, Lord, you can heal through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. That's the kind of heart as the deer pans after the water brooks. Lord, it is you or nothing else. Ah, it is you or nothing else. Thank God for money. Thank God for fame. It is you or nothing else. And God says, you are doing this for me. You are ready to experience power like never before. Please hear me. Let me speak especially those of us who are in ministry. You've heard me preach many messages about the heart. Believe me, I have read my Bible a bit. And I have walked with God a bit. The greatest second to none determinant of the dealings of God with men as far as the investment of power and being used as a witness is not his love because the same Lord is rich unto all but what distinguishes men into spiritual cadres is number one the state of your heart you can be so qualified like Eliab and God will reject you looking for a smelly shepherd because he has seen your heart it was David who wrote his sin and offense and said they should read it as a song. He was not even embarrassed about it. That is a kind of heart condition. And God said, you are a man after my heart. Number two. The second dimension, if you want to encounter the spirit of power, I'm still on point one. Maybe that can be one A now, and this is one B. Prayer and fasting. The ministry of prayer and fasting is directly connected to spiritual power. Prayer with fasting. Luke chapter 1. For the sake of time, we'll read 1, 2, and 14. Luke chapter 4 1 2 13 or 1 2 14 the bible says and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from the jordan and was led by the same spirit he was full of into the wilderness you would think the coming of the holy spirit would be the end of it he was full of the holy spirit and by the leadership of the holy spirit he was led verse 2 the Bible says, and being 40 days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended afterwards, he was hungered. Fasting, praying are irrefutable biblical keys as far as access to power is concerned. Now I tell you, fasting is not everything. 
prayer is not everything they have their roles the major roles they have to play but when it has to do with the ministry of power forget it if you do not submit yourself to the ministry of prayer and fasting praying one day will not bring you power praying six months will not bring you power the the power that comes through prayer requires consistency until you become a slave to that dimension then you are endued with power please hear me believers this is how we started i know you have heard me say i'm a product of many anointings don't think i was just lying down and various hands were laid on me no sir you can meet the most anointed man in the world and receive nothing when your capacity has not been enlarged was Jesus not around Judas? Was Jesus not around Thomas? Why didn't they receive? Power. Prayer and fasting. A generation that understands how to pray with understanding is a generation that will access power. Show me a man of God that commands spiritual power with no honor to the ministry of prayer and fasting. I show you a dimension of an operation of a spirit not the Spirit of God. If it's the Spirit of God, it will respond to the ministry of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Whatever attacks your prayer life has attacked your potential to encounter the power dimension of the Spirit of God. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. There are men of God who do not submit themselves to in Hence, moments and seasons of prayer and wonder why certain spiritual possibilities don't happen and just generalize it and think everybody who walks in power is just faking it no there are there is an investment of prayer sacrifice with fasting let me tell you food is good but food can be dangerous if you don't have an appetite you don't have the power to tame it are we together yes sir I know there are all kinds of arguments in the body of Christ about fasting. That's not my assignment tonight. But I'm telling you if it is authentic spiritual power, power as of old you are looking for, the ministry of prayer with fasting. There are people if by 7 a.m. in the morning you don't eat, it will be as if you are having headache. It's a spirit. I assure you, even medically, it's not even absolutely correct. The day you don't want to fast, you can stay even by 4 p.m. and forget. But the day you say, I will fast, 7.30. And some of you will use Tom Tom or Zobo to break that fast. Is that normal? Is that what will satisfy your hunger? It's a spirit. Let me tell you the truth. There is no gift of fasting. Fasting, all kinds of fasting take discipline. Let no one make you feel that there's an extra grace. There is no record of any unusual grace for fasting in the Bible. Fasting affects your spirit, soul, and body. You will feel tired. You will feel the weight of hunger. But it takes you placing value. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. For someone God is speaking to you, gluttony is what is eating your potential for genuine spiritual power. Talk to spirits, they talk back to you. They keep quiet. Even we are spirits who are not eating. You who wants to cast. <laughs> you don't just tell somebody, come. You don't just speak and you see, people are just shouting. It takes more than laying on of hands, my brother. There is a testament. Praying, fasting. Many of us, if we check your prayer account, you don't have up to 1,000 Naira. How much? And yet, you want to buy houses in the spirit? You want to buy estates? You are joking. With 1,000? Even in a credit system, the bank will not give you money with that kind of bad account. You need to up your game. Wake up in the night. Sala sapakatoshiata. Rakata brandeke bakosatia lakatoshia. Wake up in the night, wake up in the night. Shake slumber out of your body. Wake up in the night, pray. 
pray with seriousness don't pray while browsing you are playing don't pray while running around answering a call and coming back if it is time to pray shut down everything nothing else matters nothing else counts I'm in the presence of my Lord I pray concerning this assignment that you have for me who but you can empower a man to take the nations Lord there are sick bodies that need to be healed there are lives and destinies only God knows how many dead bodies have been allocated for your anointing to raise back only God knows how many wheelchairs are the mercy of your spiritual development Lord for my sake for, for the sake of your name move move in and through my life and one night you will go to pray like every other night except that while you are praying something happens to you that did not happen before and you will know something has come upon you the next time you stand before people God's people he will honor you you run away from him in the secret and want to play church and think he will just honor you in the presence of people you are playing games you see we keep making a fool of ourselves because we think that God plays all kinds of games and gimmicks you think you just stand before people talking and you see people shouting up and down you try it you must pray you must pray there are times you need to settle down pray carry your vision what God has given you place it on the ground and pray Lord you told me my assignment is to raise my five children they will not fail father you sent me as as an apostle as a prophet as an evangelist for your glory as I travel from nation to nation Lord I pray in the name of Jesus let the two lift gates of the cities be open for the gospel let there be healings Lord you have made me a worshiper listen hold on one minute let me talk to you my dear worship people pray oh don't just have good voices for songs you see let me tell you why many 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 people who sing don't bless people they don't pray they only train their voice voice training without a track record of solid prayer the deficiency will show on stage no matter how you twist your voice you are leading praise and worship you don't just rehearse and clear your voice and take lemon and honey and come and sing you are dealing with spirits you are dealing with destinies take out time and pray from that place of prayer the difference will be very clear that you are carrying something on your head Please, my dear people, pray. Worship team, pray. God is raising you. It's not only your songs. It is prayer that puts something on that song. More than melodies. And you stand to lead worship. And as you just raise one song, the glory that emanates from your prayer altar through your voice just sweeps across the place and you are seeing sick bodies getting healed you are not even aware just one song and they say what kind of a worshiper are you it's beyond songs beyond songs it is in the place of prayer you will receive many songs there are songs you don't have the brain to compose they will come by the spirit sometimes you will fall asleep while praying and then you will hear the angels are singing Hosanna in the highest the angels are singing you will not hear any angel with spiritual unseriousness no prayer and fasting please pray I will not give you rules but let me challenge you if you are a serious Christian this is my personal opinion at least there should be a day once a week
for you to fast. If that is too much, then forget about revival. Believe me. This is not a doctrine I'm giving you. There's no place like that in scripture. But I'm telling you, any, as if you are called into ministry, let me challenge you and, and, and admonish you by the message of God. Except you want to make mockery of yourself and make mockery of the name of the Lord through your life. There is a level of stamina. You have to trust God for grace to tame food. It is good to eat. I'm not one of these people that advocate people have died through carelessness and died the death of fools. That's not what I'm teaching you. You want to lay hands on the sick and see miracles? You want to speak the word of God and let it come with power? Man of God, pray. There are some of us who are young, we are just starting and already we are careless. One month, no prayer, no fasting. And I hope you know that fasting is not just a time where you abstain from food and sleep. You are not fasting. Albeit that is important for your health. But that is not fasting. When there is no prayer, what study and worship, you did not fast. Let me repeat. When there is no prayer, what study and worship, you did not fast. No matter, even if you do 48 hours, 72 hours, that was spent sleeping. If there is no prayer, word study, and worship, you did not fast. So just because you slept by nine and woke up by four, and slept back again and woke up quarter to five, and already started arranging your food, waiting for six on the dot. Of course, God will honor you, he's merciful, but I am telling you, that's not fasting. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Please give us verse 14, Luke 4, 14. Let's hurry up. Luke 4, 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. In verse 1, he was driven by the Spirit, full of the Spirit, but the Bible does not mention power. Verse 14, having prayed and fasted, even though with the Spirit, he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And the Bible says there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. I believe in the ministry of fasting and prayer. Please submit yourself. Fasting is not for men of God. Fasting is not for those in trouble. Fasting is not for those that the doctors say they have diabetes or they have, you know, something that is wrong with them medically. Fasting is for all men. I truly believe that. Prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting. Prayer with fasting. Hallelujah. If you are pregnant and you have children, don't worry, we'll fast for you. Our fasting will cover you. And even children too can fast. Let me tell you, don't over pamper your children until spirits enter them. Children can fast. You can, they can fast and end by 12. It does not kill them. Don't say my child is too small. Let him grow. By the time he grows, he already has. Do you think that it was a legion that entered the madman in Gadara in one day? They kept coming and calling themselves and said, this man is an available tool until they became a legion. Encounter with the spirit of power. Number two, the second platform. I hope you got my arrangement that I'm giving you three biblical platforms for accessing power with God. Number one is through encounters, encounter with the spirit of power and that there are two conditions. You want to encounter the spirit of God with his power, your heart condition, and then the ministry of prayer and fasting. Number two, the second platform for accessing power is power that is accessed through the understanding of scripture 
there is a dimension of power that is accessed through the understanding of scripture you can also put in bracket comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom the second level of spiritual power is accessed through understanding of scripture understanding the mysteries of the kingdom the principles of the kingdom have within them a measure and a dimension of God's power already pre-programmed please listen you can access a dimension of spiritual power based on light illumination that comes from scripture Acts chapter 20 and verse 32 it says and now brethren I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance it takes power for you to walk in that inheritance and that because you have embraced the word of God it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18 second Peter 3 18 it says but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and forever amen grow in grace and in the knowledge the original rendition there is not just grow in grace and in the knowledge it is growing grace through the knowledge grow in grace and your growth in grace comes through knowledge the higher your level of light the higher the spiritual power that you command are we together now yes there are things you need to know about the kingdom the way the kingdom was built advancement and power is light dependent to the degree to which you access the scriptures that means if someone comes and is saying listen there is darkness in this and that area of my life I need help you must have the level of spiritual understanding to be able to guide them to access the power of God that comes through knowledge fight ignorance fight ignorance fight ignorance believers obtain grace to study and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation you must obtain grace to have high level spiritual illumination this is the reason why coming to the house of God is very important because the house of God affords you very cheaply the privilege of being methodically mentored guided in partnership with the Holy Spirit when he the spirit of truth is come before the Holy Spirit came as the spirit of power in Acts chapter 2 Jesus told us that he will come and guide us you're not going to walk in spiritual power in ignorance it will be a risk for you to be a powerful but ignorant believer power comes with light light power comes with illumination and Jesus himself the powerful knew what he would do is God speaking to someone power for instance there are certain possibilities in the kingdom that if you just have wisdom that comes through the word you will know what to do let me show you a scripture I found this scripture and it really blessed me Proverbs 335 while I was preparing this note I just stumbled across this scripture and it ministered so deeply to me and I added it among the scriptures it says the wise shall inherit glory but shame shall be the promotion of fools the wise you will always see the glory of God around the life and the corridors of wisdom the wisdom that comes through the word it's impossible for your life to not capture and manifest the glory of God if you submit to the wisdom of the word financial glory glory in terms of influence whatever it is the power of God revealed through your life by reason of accessing wisdom for instance if doors have been closed against you and you are trusting God for open doors it's not just the issue of demons and casting out demons maybe you do not have the wisdom to understand the gift and the ministry of men hallelujah oh Lord send somebody to my life to help me and God says that dimension of power 
is released through understanding. The favor of God can come and wait at the corridor of your destiny for many years. But because you have not gone to understand the dynamics, honor, value, see, your destiny helper can come sent by God to beautify and glorify your life. But you use your mouth, you use carelessness, you use dishonor and lack of discernment to recycle seasons of pain. You can pray and fast, but because you do not understand the principles of scripture. Hallelujah. This is very important. You must learn the ways of God. There are many of you who don't read books. You don't study any material. You don't learn. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. It takes hunger and diligence. Please go online and listen to my message, buy the truth. I preached it in Takoradi in Ghana. Buy the truth. It's a very, I listed there in that teaching five currencies that we use to buy the truth. Hunger, meekness, honor. These are currencies that we use to buy the truth. You must passionately learn. Learn the things that you do not know. Knowledge is available. Knowledge is more available today than it was any time in history. It takes humility and a recognition that if I do not know and I remain in darkness, anything you want to learn today, it is available. You want to make yourself more valuable, even physically, it is available. Your destiny helper comes to your house and you don't know how to cook and you say, God will favor me. You did not bless the person. Are you not in trouble? Can't you go and meet somebody to learn how to cook as a way of preparing to honor your destiny helper? A man old enough to be your father comes to your house and after two hours, you give him a cup of cold water and he says, God forbid. <laughs> Hallelujah. You do not understand the principles of relationship and courtesy to greet. Those little, little things can rob you of the power of God. You may not see the power that is invested through knowledge. Believers, please hear me. You must understand the word dimension of the power of God. Go for the word. I immerse myself in knowledge. The knowledge of scripture and then wisdom from men and women with proven track records. It's not only God I want to know. I want to know the men I am sent to. I want to understand how men think. I want to understand the principles of influence. I want to understand leadership. I want to understand how to impact people. It's not an impartation. It comes by knowledge. Go and buy books. Go online. Settle down. Give yourself revelation projects and settle down and learn if you're with me say amen. amen please obtain grace to learn obtain grace to learn don't be lazy reject laziness it is of the devil it is a robber and a destroyer of beauty and color from a destiny A lazy generation that just believes in impartation alone will only be making a mockery of themselves. Let me tell you sincerely. It is often said, on easy lies the head that wears the crown. If you are a man of God, the only thing you learn is not, it's not only prayer and fasting and Bible study you learn. You must learn administration. You must learn finances. You must learn leadership. You must learn people skills. Are we together? There are all kinds of veterans of leadership within this ministry. Go and subscribe for their programs and learn and build capacity. Sometimes we suffer the pain of a generation that does not want diligence, but we want results. Oh God, it doesn't matter how you do. Let me just see the results. I know you are merciful. The mercy of God is not a license for foolishness. Let me tell you the truth. A diligent hand shall be made fat. There are many lazy preachers, I'm sorry to say. There are many lazy business people. You want to have influence over people? It is not only anointing you will need. An empty and a dull head. Nobody will come and submit to any leadership that does not have capacity. 
people are intelligent people don't forget that some of the people you will find around you are also leaders in their corporations conglomerates they have children some of them are employers of people to the thousands they will not come and sit down under a leader that does not know what he's saying there has to be a high level of advanced developed intelligence your mind must be alive not your spirit alone and it takes diligence receive grace to be diligent shout a loud amen receive grace to be diligent avoid premature manifestation if you are not ready sit down when you are ready the door will open if the door is closed is God's mercy keeping you so that you don't rubbish the opportunity he's given you sit down sit down and learn make up your mind that when God brings you to your season of appearance, you will not bring shame and reproach to yourself and to the name of Christ. Hallelujah. The understanding of scripture empowers men to release that dimension of God's power. The Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty, to penury. That means if you are a greedy person who is always withholding, forget about increase. Whether it is in the secular or in the kingdom, you see, giving is one of the major active ingredients as far as kingdom wealth and prosperity is concerned. God will not trust you. I hope you know that wealth in the kingdom is not an achievement. No. Maybe in the world it will be, but in the kingdom, wealth is a trust from God. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above. And there are conditions that must be met. God loves everybody, but according to Matthew chapter 25, I think from verse 16 or so, the parable of the talents, the Bible tells us very clearly that he gave unto one five talents, he gave unto one one talent, uh, two talents, he gave unto one one talent, according to their several abilities, not according to his love for them. He loved all of them, but he gave them according to their capacities. And at the end of the story, we see that he was just and fair to have done that. In the kingdom, God will not cast his spell before swine. You want God to commit to you the grace for nations and territories. It has to rise and match your level of spiritual and intellectual acumen. Number three. What is the third platform for accessing the power of God? One, we said encounters, particularly encounter with the spirit of power. Number two, power that is released through knowledge understanding of scripture and the mysteries of the kingdom number three power that is accessed through covenant alignment with anointed vessels the third dimension of power don't assume you understand what I'm saying is power that is accessed by coming into covenant alignment with careers of spiritual power careers of the anointing in Philippians 1 and verse 7, popular scripture, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7, the last sentence there says, Ye all are partakers of my grace. Paul did not say, Ye all are partakers of the grace or his grace. He knows that it all belongs to him, but with respect to what he was teaching, he said, It is grace given to me, but you can be partakers of it. Ye all are partakers of my grace. There is power that is accessed through genuine connection, covenant alignment with men and women that have been so trusted by this grace from God. It is true. There are dimensions in the spirit that God will mandate that you receive and function in by reason of your connection with certain men and women that have become careers of grace. In as much as the same Lord is rich unto all, and ultimately the Spirit of God is the giver of all, but God has so distributed this, or he has so designed this system in his kingdom, there are levels of spiritual power you can never access in isolation to certain graces that God has put 
within your life within a territory and largely speaking within the body of Christ grace every time I have the privilege of going to minister in a nation or in a church especially if I'm preaching for any of the fathers I don't just prepare the sermon among the many things I prepare I also prepare my heart and I try to study by the Spirit and through experience and through scripture the various graces that are at work in the life of those individuals so that on one hand as I go to bless them by the privilege God has given me on another hand my heart is open to receive what grace do they carry what standing do they have with God let me submit to you my dear people please listen to me there are men who have a standing with God there are men who God has covenanted and sworn by his name over their lives they have a standing with God there are men who have become the friend of God truly there are men on earth who are friends of God they are not just children of God that is wonderful but by reason of relationship and intimacy they have come to a point where God can call them friends shall I hide these from my friend Abraham seeing that he shall be a mighty man one of the proof of friendship is that you are not afraid of opening anything, including secrets. When someone is your friend, you can open even things that are not privy to everybody and say, this is it, you are my friend. Hallelujah. There are deep things that even though everything is with respect to scripture, you have to get to a stage and a level with God where God will show you certain things that make for national impact, territorial impact across regions and continents. You can be a friend of God. And that comes through living a life that desires to please Him completely. You can be the friend of God. There are people who have a stand with God. That means you can tap into their work with God and experience certain possibilities that your personal spiritual level has not yet gotten you to the level that you should have. I, I, do you understand what I just said? That means based on your personal spiritual level, some of these results and possibilities should not be happening in your life, but you can tap into their grace, their covenant, and their work with God. And you will find yourself manifesting possibilities that are far higher than your personal level of spiritual growth even before you enter it it's true it's true i have seen people carry graces i have seen people manifest possibilities that when you vet them scripturally their level of intelligence and spiritual acumen has not gotten them to the point where they should be commanding that level of result but they have been able to align through understanding humility meekness genuine covenant connection i'll give you an instance elisha there is no record of elisha being personally and meticulously trained by elijah we know that the sons of the prophet were the ones who were being trained by elijah Elisha poured water in the hands of Elijah. That means when he was going for his lecture, he would serve him and wait and allow him to teach the sons of the prophet. So based on his level of renewal, based on his level of, um, uh, what do we call it now? Maybe his, his, his level of spiritual transition. He could not have even received that anointing not to talk about a double portion. I'm sure that's why the sons of the prophet were very casual. Because they knew that this guy was only wasting his time. But he stood there with hunger. And he says, all right, you desire this. You have used honor. You have used submission. You have used genuine connection. If you can see me as I'm taking. And that mantle came upon him. And the sons of the prophet testified. They said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. Another example, when Jesus sent the disciples two by two and sent them seven by seven, I hope you know the Holy Ghost had not come upon them yet. They were not saved. None of them was born again because Jesus had not been glorified. 
there was nowhere they would have been saved because Jesus had to die and to resurrect by the glory of the Father for anyone to be saved so they just went with his word under his covering and as they went to preach the Bible says they returned rejoicing they marveled because they didn't feel anything there was nothing around their life that should produce that result they said even the demons were subject to us by thy name and he said do not rejoice because of the issue of demons rejoice rather that your names will be written in the in 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 heaven that should be the basis of your joy it is possible to come under a ministry like this and while you are still learning the principles of prosperity while you are still learning the principles of dominion you can genuinely come under this grace and start seeing certain results happen in your life even before you get to that realm there are people who have entered that realm already you will see that if you ask them and say defend these workings of the spirit they will tell you sincerely i am still growing however because of their covenant connection with understanding you have heard me tell you my precious people fans there is no inheritance for fans i am a fan of this i mm -mm. there is no inheritance for well-wishers it is people who connect with understanding hallelujah you look for instance at a ministry respectfully speaking like redeemed our father in the Lord Baba Deboe and you see the spread of redeemed globally let me submit to you you will be joking to believe that that spread is just an independent reflection of every of the branch or every of the pastors personal work with God it will be a joke there are certain things you see that is a product of a corporate grace moving people together are we together you can step into certain graces and begin to prosper even while you are learning people will see you and they will mistake you they will even say listen come and teach us about wealth and prosperity and you say listen i will only embarrass myself i'm still learning it's just the grace of god that is at work in me some of these graces are activated through the power of prophetic speakings like when they speak over you like you are about to receive this night you see as you receive it with understanding the realm of the spirit responds to the fact that you received it listen when he said by this time tomorrow he did not have to wait for everybody in Samaria one by one to believe people just sat down and by the next day they were eating well under the corporate grace of a prophet Hallelujah. One of those profound revelations is our salvation. Imagine if everybody had to die on the cross. Jesus said, all right, I've done it for you. You saw exactly how I did it. Everybody get a carpenter, be on your way to any mountain around your area and die. There would probably be less than 100 people who will be saved by now because nobody will want to die yet he did the dying and then he got up as a conqueror and came to you you do not qualify it should never be for you you are saved by grace and that works even not of yours it is of god and no one there's no boasting there and he gave you his life and you simply received it by faith and it was credited to you in the realm of the spirit that when he died you died too it's not just that he died and you received his life is that both of you too died Galatians 2 20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless it's not just that he died and gave me life I also died with him nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that liveth in me and the life that I live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. And you look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me. Show 
listen to me ladies and gentlemen please hear me do you know the advantage of being planted in the house of God where the power and the grace of God is at work it is a system of advantage provided for you so that while you grow God knows that it takes time to grow let me tell you the truth it takes time to be born again it takes time to learn it takes time to be filled with the Holy Spirit it takes time to begin to learn the ways of God while that is happening if the realm of the spirit and if God depended on your personal spiritual life you may die before you come to know your rights in Christ and walk in authority so in the interim he places systems of advantage one of it is the power of prophetic covering that you can come under the covering and the grace the blood that was put on the lintel they didn't put the blood on everybody's head even if you were somebody in unbelief once you were in a house where there was blood upon the lintel the angel of death will pass it was not about everybody's the, the personal fate of the individual as for me and my house there are times that your grace can cover the house there are many of you I submit to you there are many blessings you have received today that may not necessarily be a reflection of your prayer life your spiritual life but certain intercessions have happened for you and you come into that inheritance because you see when the realm of the spirit is distributing the advantage it distributes to everyone who is part of that fold this is true remember the example I gave you some time ago that when you stand to take a shower do you have to lift your leg to touch the shower the leg does not have to be worried all you need to do is just stand in front of the shower for a while it will look like it's only the head that is enjoying the water but every part of that body will receive sufficient water as far as your bathing is concerned that's how it is it may start from the head if the leg decides to go and wait at the door then that leg will not experience that process of bathing it is dangerous especially in this end time to alienate yourself from the grace and that that corporate covering is a risk and I hope you know that proximity is not the same as connection no you can be close to an anointing you can be in, within a house like this and yet not have anything happen to you look at Elisha he was very wise he said where is the Lord God of Elijah as one who had already carried the double portion he recognized God and he recognized Elijah and the Red Sea parted the Jordan parted hallelujah you are reaping where you bestowed no labor others have labored but with understanding you can step into the harvest please hear me this is why you see if you are genuinely part of this ministry my heart bleeds if there are certain graces that you don't carry in your life they, believe me this is not pride there are some graces and some dimensions of God's power that should never be a struggle for your spiritual life while you grow to step into that realm in experience there is already a portal that has been opened through sacrifice and if you have the understanding you can step on it do you believe what I'm saying you're part of this vision and men do not arise to help you you don't experience the favor of God the presence of God is a struggle no something is wrong we don't claim to have everything but there are some things he has given and for someone God brought you here to tell you you are your family members you are struggling this is unnecessary it's unnecessary you cannot come to an oasis where there's water and then you are struggling and begging and crying for water it ought not to be so they came to the one who supplies bread he multiplied bread and gave everybody they ate and ate and didn't know what to do there were five loaves and two fish I mean um, uh, 12 baskets left there are certain graces that should be at work in your life in this house you see everybody rejecting you 
nobody opening up doors for you you cry and there's nobody helping you you are rejecting the investment of the spirit you are also rejecting the possibilities that reside within this place is someone learning we also give that which we have received not every grace you see here just came as a result of personal encounters out of the abundance of that which we have received from the fathers that is speaking it must speak in your life too in the name of jesus christ you're a man of god connected to this vision it's not about size or whatever but you should not be small he said i will glorify them they will not be small i will multiply them they will not be few it's a grace have you accessed the hear ye him anointing have you accessed the grace for favor what is it about the house rents that God cannot arise and wipe your tears? Yes, you are learning, but can you not come under that grace? It's more than money. How about the manifestation of the presence of God? How about your prayer life? Apostle, I'm struggling with prayer. I don't know that grace is not there. Then there is something you are not maximizing. There is a grace in abundance that if you can open up your heart, And you receive with power and receive with grace please hear me we are in the days of his power where the nations need to see Jesus revealed through the display of the multifaceted dimension of God's power God is counting on you ladies and gentlemen God is counting on me it thank God for all the people we keep talking about in history but they have gone they have joined the cloud of witnesses right now God is counting on us and in the name of Jesus we will not fail God in the name of Jesus you will not fail your family in the name of Jesus you will not fail this nation the days of his power where we will start hearing that someone came out of here and while he was on his way going somewhere something just happened to someone and they said the baby is dead and you stand and say in the name of Jesus as a child of God who has been taught I decree and declare that baby come back to life now and the baby jacks back to life and everybody within that territory the parents the families are we together that you go home and there's one church just close to your house and they said, dear brother, um, can you just come and share and just tell us something about the love of Jesus? And you don't sit there and say, well, I'm not really in ministry, you know. We are not this thing about revelation. It's not all of us that have it. It's an indictment on the spiritual investment upon your person. That you enter that church knowing that God does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the called. You stand being that you have been instant in season and out of season, knowing that you are not alone and the Lord walking with them, confirming the words with signs and wonders. The opening of your mouth becomes deliverance for people. And the grace of God sweeps over that assembly. Souls saved, lives healed and changed and transformed. There are some of you here there are businesses that will call you and say come and be part of us not by adding any value become like the ark of God in the business in the name of Jesus Christ that people will call you and say listen this is we are a group of business people we have discerned that you carry an unusual grace for favor and we want that grace to be at work in us come and be part of this business what is my role in this business nothing just pray and speak for our welfare. That the least becomes as David. Please let me tell you this before we round up. Everything that has made you feel you are not up to. Everything that has made you feel it is not for people like you. I want you to reject it tonight in the name of Jesus. It is true that is, there is room for growth and there are levels in the spirit. But can I assure you, 
cast not away your confidence my dear people it has a great recompense of reward therefore I cast every spirit that has kept you to make you feel that you are not capable maybe some of you in ministry I cannot speak well maybe I cannot sing well every spirit that has brought you down demeaning and downplaying the investment of God in your life you are afraid of laying hands on the sick because you are afraid of embarrassment I cast that spirit right now in Jesus name me some of you this spirit may have come as a result of mindsets you have received from people and from situations that have downplayed and demeaned you they make it look like it's not for people like you you are very weak people you are very this and that you don't have to argue with anyone but I want you to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free and do not allow anyone or anything rest in the love of God I may not look like what you want but he loves me and that is the most important thing if God has loved you and has approved you then that is it don't get into this especially this our world today of bending into all kinds of things and become a victim of people's emotion rest in the confidence that you are loved you are chosen hallelujah I believe in Jesus but let me tell you sincerely I believe in myself too ah, I believe in myself in the name of Jesus I'll be lying if I tell you I don't mm -mm. I believe in Jesus but this man standing before you I believe in myself my only limit in life is the voice of God and the law of process I don't see limitations in front of me truly this is my mindset if God sends me to any nation as I go to that nation I don't go there wondering what kind of demons are in that place will the people listen no. there is a level of confidence not pride that you need to have to know that you can be trusted God can trust you man of God as we are wrapping up the Lord is speaking to you God believes in you. Even Satan is afraid of you, but you have refused to believe in yourself. Crying for the approval of men as the basis of your confidence. That is a big mistake you are making with your life. You need to believe in Jesus and you need to believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are loved. Believe that you are part of the fold of God. Please hear me. Believe that God loves you. And believe that he has a great plan for you. That when God is talking about the mighty army, don't exclude yourself. Don't use any kind of sentiment, age, background, whatever it is. Physical mundane parameters. Uh -uh. There is none of us that is ever qualified enough based on the credentials of the flesh to be used by God but since he has drawn us by his mercy we come running with joy and gratitude and confidence he can send us to any nation and we will go he can tell us to take the globe and we will go there is no fear if you are afraid there are many things you will not do in your life you will be whipping up and attracting sympathy from people there are some of you is fear that has stopped you from building that house till today you have the land you have everything to start fear what will people say God must grant someone grace for somebody you should leave this meeting now and by tomorrow if somebody tells you I'm sick tell him in the name of Jesus can I pray for you I have been trained I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God be healed apostle what happens is the person is not healed you do collect money no you get into trouble when you collect that if you if you collect money are we together someone comes and tells you do you know every door is closed how can I reach apostle and you tell him well you may not be able to reach apostle but do you believe 
that I will stand and agree with you. And while you are saying that, the spirit of grace is ready for you to speak. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead. And whoosh, a miracle happens to that person. The next time they see you, they say, Pastor. He said, no, 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 I'm a banker. I said, that's none of my business. It is the dimension of you that minister to me that I will call. The Bible said they will call you ministers of our God. There are many of you, God is about to give you a new name. By reason of the mighty things that he's doing in and through your life. A new name. A new name. Some of you will sing and worship and sing to the nations. And just one song that God gives you will go across the globe, blessing and healing and lifting people. Hallelujah. That, that reminds me, come, David Dam, when is your, your worship program? I just, I just remembered. I just remembered. We pray for you. This is a son in the house and make sure you support him and pray for him. When is it? 19th. Let's pray for him. It's not about concert. It's not a time of jamboree. This is a worship time. You can go and stand there. You can go and, and be part of it. Get more information from him. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Dave that he will sing the praises of Jesus to the nations. We pray for this worship experience coming. Lord, anoint him like never before. Anoint the worship team like never before. Anoint all the organizers like never before. Let no flesh be glorified in your presence. Lord, I pray that as he lifts up your name, you will respond to his needs. You will increase him. I use him as a point of contact to pray for the entire worship team. Lord, it's a new season for them. Oh, you will take these precious people to the nations. They will sing your praises across the length and the breadth of the nations. Bringing revival, bringing hope, healing, and life to many. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I just thought to do this. Hallelujah. So encourage him. Some of you after service, the Lord may lay it in your heart. Just to drop a seed and bless him. Why not? Encourage him. Encourage him. We believe in our people and we'll invest in our people as God grants grace. Hallelujah. And don't come and say we should pray for you when you are not prepared. Let me just say it now. Because believers are masters of, of, of do your homework and come. We, will bless, we can bless you for grace to do your homework. That one I will do it even now. But once you do your homework and come, believe me, we will not waste the influence God has given. And when God lifts you, make sure you don't forget him. Please, don't bring shame to the Lord. Too many people have done it already. Let there be people who will stand. Even with a crown on your head, you can still let the nations know that he is king. I think it's good for the night. We can wrap up now. Stand on your feet, please. I want to pray one serious prayer over our lives and I want everybody to receive. We need to be endued with power. Ladies and gentlemen, you are believers in Christ. And I want you to know that by reason of your being grafted into Christ, there are levels of power and grace your life should command. Power comes in levels. Grace is come in level what you can receive. I want to pray and speak over your life and I want you to truly receive from the depth of your heart. You will be surprised to see the kind of results you begin to command. You believe that? In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Every season of spiritual dryness with no power, no manifestation of the word of God, you have come to Bethel, the house of God. I decree and declare in higher dimension of spiritual power may, may it rest upon you now the grace for signs and wonders like never before 
I release it upon you. Receive it now. I release it upon you. Receive it now. Supernatural signs and wonders through your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for intimacy. The grace to spend time in his presence until you draw forth into your life the riches of heaven. I impart that grace upon you. I impart that grace upon you. Let me impart the grace for prayer. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication. The grace to travel until you touch dimensions of spiritual reality. Receive that grace right now in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual slumber, every spiritual lukewarmness, I declare be free from it right now. The capacity to understand scripture, high level spiritual illumination, I declare may your eyes be open, may your heart be open, may your mind be open in the name of Jesus Christ. The fortitude to comprehend spiritual reality, I decree and declare may that grace rest upon you. Hear me. For the things you need right now, that your spiritual level has not yet, um, based on your spiritual level, you may not seem to purchase those spiritual realities. I stand by the power of this apostolic and prophetic mantle. I still shift you to step into that level. I shift you to step into that level. Levels of favor, levels of honor, levels of influence, levels of speed. Let me pray over your finances. Please receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I sincerely pray for you from the depth of my heart that by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I forbid your hands from being dry. I forbid your hands from being dry. Enjoy the gift of man. Enjoy the gift of man. Enjoy the gift of man. Favor from the north. Favor from the south. Favor from the east. Favor from the west. Step into prepared blessings. Hallelujah. Where you have been despised from tonight, I place a mantle of honor upon your head. Everything that has refused to grow in your life, I declare the grace that makes for multiplication and growth. Whether it's your work, whether it's your business, whether it's your ministry, experience exponential growth. Finally, I pray for you in the name that is above all names. All the people who have been mandated to come and be blessed by your anointing, wherever they are, I decree and declare by divine coincidences, by the leadings of the Spirit, I send them to your life to be blessed. I send them to your church to be blessed. I send them to your organizations to be blessed. In the name of Jesus, from today I want you to carry this consciousness. I am a blessing. Say it please. One more time, say I am a blessing. For the last time, say I am a blessing. Reject anything that wants to make you look like you're a cause. Anybody who does not appreciate you for who you are, just leave them with their ignorance. But as far as you are concerned, I am a blessing. Say it in the morning, say it in the afternoon, say it in the evening. Whenever you go to work, 
you are not just an employee waiting for salary I am a blessing the power of God is at work in me I am a blessing a blessing to your husband a blessing to your wife a blessing to your children a blessing by reason of being a doctor a blessing by reason of being a man of God I am not a curse I don't bring pain I don't bring regret there is no regret around me I am a blessing In thee, says, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. When you carry the mentality, you are a blessing. When people come to you in need, you don't just look at them and pity yourself. You are happy because if you cannot give them money, if you cannot give them counsel, don't forget you are anointed. Don't say, I cannot do anything. They may ask you for money. They may be confused. But there is something you have. You can tell them, listen, I may not be able to give you any money here but let me pray that grace let it work go and they will think they just left until they return with fearful testimonies be a proof producer be a sign producer be a wonder producer in the name of Jesus Christ be a multiplier factor to the advancement of the kingdom in Jesus name we pray Let's stand as I make the altar call. Jesus is calling someone right now. You heard what we said. You must be in Christ. The power that was released is for believers who are in Christ. And please hear me. You came to church tonight, young, old, whatever region you came from, and the Lord is calling you like this gentleman who is coming out right now. I'm going to make a call. It pays not only to serve Jesus, but to love him and to come. He's done everything. He's given his life literally for you. You can choose to remain behind and say, I don't care. But the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice, for some of you as you are coming out, is the salvation of your family that is coming out. For some of you as you are coming out, it is an evangelist that is coming out. An apostle in the making who is coming out. I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, I want you to run and come and stand right now as I make that call. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. It does not matter. Take your bags, your Bible if you can, and everything you came to church with, and very quickly come to the front. God bless you. I begin my counting now. Let's honor them, Koinonia. One. Come home. Two. Come home. You. Come, let him give you a new beginning. Some of you, your coming today is a response to the prayers of many. Come, young and old, together. You are in all the overflows, you are outside. And for our global family, those who are connecting by way of the internet, Jesus is giving you an opportunity. For some, you are saying, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but I need to rededicate my life and to make things right. Join them very quickly. I'm about to pray. Join them. Join them. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. And the Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. You have come to Jesus. He is able to give you a new beginning. Please lift your right hand, if you can, as a sign of surrender to Jesus. And I'd like you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You are joining them. Please come join them very quickly. We're about to pray. Say this loud and clear. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart and I need you in my life right now I receive Jesus as my Savior I receive Jesus as my Lord I receive Jesus 
as my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever. I am a child of God, the righteousness of God, and I go from glory to glory and grace to grace. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious, precious people you have brought. Thank you for those who are following online, making Jesus Lord of their lives. Thank you for those in all of the overflows. You have done this to bring glory to your name. This is what it's all about. And Lord, we thank you for bringing these ones to Jesus. They have come, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, that based on the integrity of your word and their confession, we call them bona fide recipients of eternal life. We declare that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. From tonight, you walk in the newness of life and you go from glory to glory. In Jesus' matchless name I pray. Amen and amen. May I please request that you follow the counselors. They are waving the placard. Just a moment with you and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them very quickly. Please rise, we're wrapping up. Draw me nearer nearer blessed Lord through the cross where thou hast died draw me We are fasting on Sunday. On Sunday we'll be fasting. Children can break their fast from 12. All our children, they can break their fast from 12. Pregnant women and those who have any medical condition, don't worry, we are fasting. Our fasting will cover for you in the name of Jesus. Every other person, let's see how God will help us. Because of koinonia, we may just stretch anything from three. You can break so you have the time to plan before you come. When we are fasting as a ministry, please make sure you are part of it. I want you to look to our social media platforms for the prayer focus. Every time we are fasting, we declare a fast. There's usually a prayer focus to be able to guide you. You can have some time to pray and then take advantage of the prayer focus and have the, the, some time to just pray in the spirit, prepare your heart. It's part of our spiritual growth process. We believe in raising people, a people of stature, and a people of power. May I encourage you to use this week, let it be for you a week of spiritual emphasis. Take the time to get quality teachings and camp with the word of God. Study and pray, build stamina in the spirit. He says, meditate on these things, give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting will appear unto all in the name of Jesus Christ. For tonight I declare that you are blessed. The hand of God is upon you. You have come, you return like Jesus in the power of the Spirit. And the results will be evident before all men. In the name of Jesus, may your hunger for spiritual things not diminish. May honor and grace be multiplied upon your life. For those of you traveling, we declare that your journeys are blessed. You go forth with joy and you are led forth with peace. And now may the Lord of peace himself grant you peace always and by all means. We declare that there will be nothing missing and nothing broken in your life. You are blessed. You remain ever blessed. For in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. After the grace, I'd like you to look at two, three people and tell them I am a blessing. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Surely... All the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you next week.
lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me.